Hey YouTubers, we're going to take a quick look at a brand new release, so new in fact that it's not actually out yet. It's being released Wednesday, October 3rd, but if you head into a JB store next week, you'll probably find that it'll already be on the shelf. It is a JB exclusive and it's been released by Umbrella Entertainment. It's Hellraiser 1 to 3 in a collectible metal pack and it looks pretty spiffy. Okay, as you can see, it does have the metal finish. You've got the uh, Chinese puzzle box, the laminate configuration in the background there. You do have the Australian censorship rating down the bottom here, but that's just an adhesive sticker, so you can remove that and display the artwork as it was intended. The spine of the release there, just with the rating, the title, the supplier, and uh, denoting how many discs are actually in the pack itself. It is three Blu-rays. Uh, you've got synopsises for all three films there. Uh, the first and the second film are in 1080p, the third is only in 1080i, but that said it's a killer transfer, it's probably the best transfer I've seen in Hellraiser 3 yet. I haven't seen the overseas Blu-ray, I think it might be a French one as yet, but I heard pretty mixed things about it. As far as transfers go, this is the best I've seen Hellraiser 3 look. Uh, there is special feature content, which is a bit of a first, I guess, for the first film in that there is the special edition floating around, but the first generation of discs that went out were a featureless version. This one that's contained in this pack is the special feature Aladdin version. Um, however, all the special features are in power, so they're running at 25 frames per second. So uh, if you're buying from overseas, just be aware of that. You might have a little bit of a problem with playback. Aside from that, it is uh, region A, B, and C, so you will be able to play the feature and enjoy it. And the features themselves are all in uh, 5.1 Dolby True HD. Let's have a look inside the pack. Now, this is probably my main gripe. It's really hard to get the discs out. I love that Umbrella's kept the original theatrical artwork for Hellraiser and Hellbound Hellraiser 2, but getting the discs out can be a bit of a chewer because you don't want to break them. Underneath, we've got some artwork there of the Centibytes, and it looks like it's the artwork from a promotional photo from Hellbound Hellraiser 2. In fact, I believe that was the artwork they used on the old Roadshow uh, double VHS when it came out. When it came out, it had Hellraiser and Hellraiser 2 in like one rental pack. At least the video store I rented it from did, and Hellraiser 2 was banned in Queensland, so it was a tricky one to track down back in the day. But there you got Hellraiser. Here we've got Hellbound Hellraiser 2. And that just flips over like that. Then we've got Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth. And for that, it looks like they've just combined artwork. Uh, well, you've got the original artwork from Hellraiser there. I don't believe that's the artwork from Hell on Earth. Uh, and in the background, you've got some critters, some crazy Cenobites from Hellraiser 3. Hellraiser 3 is probably the weakest, definitely, in my opinion, the weakest in the first three films. Uh, I don't really even rate the last... I don't know how many films they made. I think they made another five at least. Um, and the last one was Revelations. That might even be number nine. Um, but yeah, Hellraiser 3, it's, you know, I think it, as an effects film, it's quite good. And it's all right for a bit of backstory on, obviously, uh, Doug Bradley's character, the Pinhead, and a few of the Cenobites. But as a whole, I wasn't a massive fan of it. Um, and it was interesting revisiting it. I probably hate it less than I did growing up. But yeah. It's less synopsis. I'm sure that you've all seen it and formed an opinion over the years of it. So underneath that, we've got another image from Hellbound Hellraiser 2. And up here, we've got all the special feature content that is on all three discs. Now, I might mention, whilst number one is a special edition, it doesn't actually port over all the special features on the now-deleted Anchor Bay Blu-ray. Uh, from memory, I think the features missing from the Anchor Bay are the Mr. Cotton, I presume, featurette. Um, the actress from Hell featurette. I think they basically interviews anyway. Um, and maybe the composition one, the Hell composer, the interview with the composer. Um, Hellraiser Resurrection's definitely on there. Under the Skin's on there. The audio commentary with Clive Barker, Ashley Lawrence is on there. Um, I'm not entirely sure whether the trailers and the TV spots are on there. Uh, and the behind-the-scenes photo galleries and poster and advertising galleries aren't on there. In fact, what is on there is the audio commentary with Clive Barker and Ashley Lawrence, uh, the Hellraiser Resurrection feature it, Under the Skin with Doug Bradley, and an on-set interview with Clive Barker. The on-set interview with Clive Barker, though, may not have been on the US release. It may have been on the UK DVD release, the old Anchor Bay one that was out. Um, but yeah, moving on, on the second feature on Hellbound Hellraiser 2, uh, which unfortunately at this stage is only available in a uh, featureless edition through Image Entertainment. And 
Uh, yeah, so the Australian release trumps it because the transfer is on par, if not better, in my opinion. Um, the features are a little bit strange on Hellbound Hellraiser 2 because, as far as I can tell, some of them don't actually look like they're in the right aspect ratio. you kind of got to toggle around with the remote on your TV to make it look right. Um, but yeah, you've got an audio commentary with uh, Tony Randall, star Ashley Lawrence and writer Peter Atkins. You've got another under the skin featurette with Doug Bradley on Hellraiser 2. You've got Lost in the Labyrinth featurette, which yeah, is all ported from the original Anchor Bay Hellbound release. So I think like 20th anniversary or 25th anniversary release. Uh, you've got inset interviews with Clive Barker, Tony Randall, a bunch of other people. Um, another onset interview with Clive Barker, behind the scenes montage. And you actually got trailers and TV spots for this one. Uh, then the third film uh, ports off all the, uh, ports over I should say, all the special features from the previous Umbrella DVD release, which was the audio commentary with director Anthony Hickox, which you might know from Waxworks 1 and 2. Uh, actor Doug Bradley, another under the skin featurette with Doug Bradley talking about Hellraiser 3, Raising Hell on Earth, an interview with the director Anthony Hickox, and Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, interviews Clive Barker, Doug Bradley, and there's a trail on there too. Um, so I'm just going to put that disc back in there and give you one last look at it. So that's the inside there. I really like how they've utilised the inside to put the images there from Hellbound along with the special feature content. There's the front again with all the detail. It's actually quite cool. And the back of the release. The spine and for those steel book and metal pack enthusiasts that's what the actual opening does it's quite easy to open like that um, but yeah it's a really nice set and I believe it's going to be retailing at JB stores for under $50 so I think it's pretty good value when you consider the most blu-rays of you know classic kind of films typically retail for anywhere between you know probably $16 at the low end of the spectrum as a relatively new release right through to 30 so for under 50 you're getting three films pretty good value in my opinion especially considering the third is unavailable on Blu-ray in Australia um, and pretty much anywhere in the world so yeah that's the Hellraiser 1 to 3 collection thanks for watching we'll tear your soul apart